Crews at the Y-12 National Security Complex's Alpha 2 building have started demolition on the four-story high bay area. Using a high-reach tool, heavy equipment operators can surgically remove the vertical building columns and horizontal columns approximately 15 feet from the top of Alpha 2. In tandem, Phase 4 of the demolition of the low bay on the north side of Alpha 2 is in full swing made possible by the year-long utility reroutes project. Uh, the biggest challenge is probably trying to stay within your perimeters of the machine and doing the job safely and protecting the ones around you. You know, I've got other operators around me that you got to look out for too and make sure you don't put them in harm's way as well. So we had a lot, a lot of above ground utilities that were close to the building, air, nitrogen, steam that had to be rerouted and uh, rerouted to the point where they were away from the, the building footprint so we could demo the building. Alpha 2 is one of the higher risk projects we have here on the Y-12 site and clearing the footprint will uh, enable the space to be used for future use. Alpha 2, constructed in 1944 to enrich uranium, is categorized as a high risk excess contaminated facility at Y-12. Its removal eliminates hazards and will provide land for the National Security Administration's continuing missions at Y-12. This project marks the first demolition of a former enrichment building at Y-12 and sets the stage for future demolitions. Crews at the Transuranic Waste Processing Center, TWPC, have successfully completed the processing and shipment of a specialized radioactive source to an out-of-state facility for permanent disposal, advancing the ongoing cleanup of ORNL's legacy waste materials. Today was the culmination of a years-long project to process and ship a radium boron source. The radium boron source was a source used at ORNL in the 1970s. 2004, they decided that it was no longer needed and plans were developed to get the source out of the state of Tennessee, basically. Uh, in 2019, TWPC started working on this project to uh, disposition this source. It was a, a total team effort by TWPC, all of our entities coming together to process and ship the radium boron source. We worked with uh, INL, Idaho National Labs, and their off-site source recovery program. And as you can see behind me, their cask, their 10160B cask, had them come out this week to help us with the final process, which was loading the radium boron source in their cask. So they provided the oversight while our operators did the work to get this cask loaded and ready for shipment. Just a lot of processes in place to make that happen. It, uh, this is the culmination of all of it right here. So the work itself, the processing took about a day, and the, sh and the loading took about a day, right? But it's all the planning, all the pre-planning ahead of that. And that's where the TWPC team came into play because like I said, there's, there's so many people out here, so many departments that helped to get to the point we're at today where we can get this radium boron source out of here. At ORNL Radioisotope Development Laboratory, demolition prep is in full swing as demolition day approaches on the b-cell portion of the final hot cell b-cell the workers have completed the deactivation process in b-cell what remains there is just some isolations that need to be performed and some decontamination of the inside of the cell a cell is the more contaminated and higher dose field that we have to go execute and deactivate um, so the approach is to start with b-cell it will give us a a better understanding of how the cell will disassemble. There's an interior stainless steel liner that has to separate from the concrete. Um, so by doing that in the lower dose B cell, it will give us a better understanding and a better plan as we execute the higher dose and more contaminated A cell. We're going to start on the, uh, the really the north end of B cell. Um, we're going to demo uh, approximately a little less than half of it because we had to keep uh, the structural stability for A and the rest of the cell, so we're going for a partial demo. So we'll bring the uh, heavy equipment that we already have in the tent up to the, the demo face. We'll, uh, we'll start hammering it, hammer all that we can of the cell. It'll be the, the very west wall of the ceiling. Once the B cell is demolished, the final remaining hot cell demolition will follow next year. Hundreds of people from across the country attended Safety Fest Tennessee last week. UCOR was a co-sponsor of the event 
which was held primarily at New Hope Center. UCOR managed class selection and scheduling, instructor interface, the online registration system, and on-site registration. This year marked Safety Fest Tennessee's 10th anniversary. More than 100 classes and demonstrations were provided. Participants included the Tennessee Army National Guard, which demonstrated its Black Hawk helicopter, KUB with natural gas and power line safety demonstrations, 3M focusing on fall protection, and much more. More than 40 vendors participated in the Safety Expo to share information about safety-related projects and services.